Hi there, I'm Miss Osuna and today we are going to render a pair of jeans. This is with marker and colored pencil and also you're going to need a container that is metal, maybe like the top of a cookie jar, those tin containers. So let's get started by drawing our croquis. We are going to start off with our oval and our straight line and then of course we want nine head spaces. Remember, Horny Alex was caught French kissing Carrie Ann's grandmother. Those are the labels for the placement of your labels. So the H is for head, the A is for apex, the W is for waist, the C is for crotch, the F is for fingertip, the K is for knee, the C for Carrie is the calf, and then the A is the ankle and the G is the ground. So at one and a half, we have our shoulder guideline, left side higher, right side lower. And then the waist is the opposite, left side is lower. Now we are gonna go on ahead. This time I'm drawing the hip curve on the right side and then the shoulder curve on the left side. So this is a slightly different way to start off a croquis and that's just to help you develop your own sense of style. Now we place the neck and we're gonna redraw the head over toward the side. So we always start with everything vertical and center, and then if we make changes to the head positioning, we can draw right on top of the original. But we need that original to go back to for measurements. So zero to one and a half, or zero to the shoulder guideline. That's literally the width of our shoulders. And make sure your shoulder slope is in there slightly under the shoulder guideline. Now as you do your left side of your hip, it's flatter and the crotch or hip guideline is the same as your waist. Those are parallel. Put in your bikini bottoms and now we are going to decide on the center of each leg at the leg opening. So we're gonna have the toes facing each other on this particular croquis. Now let's draw the guideline for the legs. So it comes from the center of our leg opening. And then as you get to eight, it starts to taper and get closer to the center. And then by nine, it's close to the center. The one on the left side has a little bit of a curve facing the right side. Okay, place your knee guideline the same as your crotch. And then of course, draw in your thigh, stopping at that knee guideline. The leg on the right side is where she has her weight, that's her support leg, that's where we start first. Make sure that as you draw in your leg, you taper at number eight for the ankle, then drop in your toe and your foot and the back of your ankle. Now let's draw the leg on the left side of our sketch. And remember stopping at the knee socket, it's lower on that left side, but our legs are facing each other so that she has a fairly interesting pose here. The positioning of the knees facing each other and the toes facing each other just gives some interest to this particular croaky pose. Once you finish your legs, it's gonna be time for us to move on and you'll give yourself some guidelines for your arms and then of course the bust. So diagonally left and then toward the body on the left side of our sketch. Give a guideline for your hand as well. On the right side of the sketch, it comes down. It's going to follow closely by that hip and then it's going to slightly disappear. Okay, so some of that forearm disappears behind the hip as I mentioned earlier and then go on ahead and drop in your hand. Remember the wrist is from the crotch that's four and a quarter, down to about mid-thigh. Now we're having our bust guideline parallel to the shoulder, and on the right side of our sketch, you see some of the profile of our bust, and then the rib cage. Then drop in the bust on the left side of our sketch. Now we'll do the arm on the left side of the sketch, and that is going to be bent. Her hand is going to be on her hip. 
and this is foreshortened. It's not the full length because of course it is bent. So when you have your elbow bent, it makes the forearm appear a little shorter. Go on ahead and drop in your details for the fingers, straight line and then a J underneath for the fingertip. Now I'm just gonna trace this in a dark blue so that we can use this croquis simply by placing marker paper on top of it and we'll be able to see through. So then I can just trace my croquis onto the marker paper without dirtying it up. So you can use this croquis several times when you trace it with a dark marker without having to start all over again. You can change the head position, you can have the arm be straight on the left side, for example, and maybe bent on the right side. So you can make many subtle changes to the same croquis and use it over and over again throughout your portfolio. So while I finish tracing this, I'll let you trace yours as well, then get ready to grab some marker paper that we will put on top. Now grab some marker paper and put on top. I use Canson Pro Layout marker paper and any marker paper that you have, I suggest you use it. But when you have some time, explore and try different ones. So we're focusing on jeans. So I'm moving this all the way to the bottom so that we can work waist down. And you can see through which is the whole entire point of tracing our original croquis from our drawing paper. You don't even need a light box for this. So I'm just gonna trace the arm and the hand and then a little bit of our torso and then we'll start drawing in our jeans. Okay, now it's gonna be time to start drawing in our jeans. I'm starting with the center line and then the zipper, which is created with a J shape. That's a fly front zipper. As I go down the side seams and the inseam, I'm gonna make a few wavy lines, especially by the knee, because of course, the denim is going to be wrinkled in those places. I'm doing this also by the ankle and I'm gonna give a nice big cuff.
Okay, now it's time for us to start using our marker. So I'm just gonna lightly erase some of the lead because again, you don't want it to muddy. You just need barely enough lead on your paper so that you can see what to draw. I'm going to be using a light blue. This is called saline blue, but any light blue that you have will work fine. I'm using the thicker brush tip side and this is not going to be filled in smoothly for the first layer. We do want to have some texture because denim has a twill texture, which is quite thick. So for a 16 ounce denim, pretty standard, you want to make sure that you fill that first layer in in an uneven way. So we're going up and down, but you can see we already have a little bit of texture. Now we're going to start adding areas where there are obvious shadows and the second thing to note is where you're going to pick your shadow side. My shadow side is on the left. So the first obvious shadow area is the Z shape at the crotch and then of course on the knee. So that's the back of our knee and then on the kneecap side it's underneath the kneecap. So add that shadow in there and then on the right side of our sketch make sure you do the same. So it's under the kneecap and at the back of the knee. Now I'm just going to extend the crotch shadows because we have whiskers. And then I'm going to add some shadow on the left side. And this is all with the same marker and the right side of our legs. But remember, I'm having more shadow on my left side because that's the way that I'm choosing to make this sketch. The left side is the shadow, the right side is the light source. So continue following along as we add the beginnings of our shadows. And as you're using this same marker, it just simply becomes darker. And you wanna keep in mind the shape that we are going for. We wanna end up with a lighter center and then darker on our edges. That's what it looks like for our final product. Now let's get back to rendering. Just take special note of some of the shapes that we're making with our shadows. So there's sort of a triangular or Z shape, almost like a lightning bolt. That is happening at our thigh areas for the left side and the right side and of course, as you add layer after layer, each time it gets darker and darker, and you can stop whenever you feel that you've achieved the darkness that you want. So let's continue. Now we're going to get ready to do something interesting here. Grab a tin container, something metal, and just take some black marker. Of course, we're talking design marker and scribble on it. This will allow you to dip into the black and gently add to your blue. Same blue marker. I'm just going to dip my wedge side, the same side I've been using, right into the black just to have a darker tone of the same marker. And it's 
starting on the shadow side of course we're going to go on ahead from waist down and start adding bit by bit as you continue coloring the black lightens so then you'll have to dip back in notice i'm only going about an inch at a time and i start on the shadow side and then i continue coloring and move toward the lighter side but i'm really staying on this far left seam so that I can just work my way down the seam one inch at a time. So as it fades away, then I dip back into it to replenish. And as you scribble over and over again, it just gets lighter. So here, notice it's darker. And then as you continue moving your marker across your page, it gets lighter. So these are the whiskers that I'm creating and then those are at the center crotch and at the side seam as well. But this is how we will be able to use one marker, literally the same blue for this entire sketch. And then to get the twill texture, we'll just add a little bit of colored pencil. So notice I'm barely touching the point of my marker into the black and so that's how you're able to get very thin lines and then when you want a very heavy black onto your marker then you can just dip the whole entire wedge into the marker but for now I'm just doing the point Let's continue on. You know what they say, inch by inch, life's a cinch. That's certainly true here. Don't rush the process. Just go nice and slowly. Take your time and be sure that you start on your edges and then work your way closer to the center. And that helps the marker to come back to the blue. So you get a natural gradation. Here I'm emphasizing that kneecap. Remember that the kneecaps face each other because the toes are facing each other. now we're just going to scribble more and allow the marker to clean itself out and that's going to allow our edges to become darker and darker for this look I am using the full wedge notice the positioning of the marker changed so it's thicker 
and that is after I have most of the black in place. At this point, you should see a really good amount of shadow and the details are starting to come to life. So it just takes time to just continue this process little by little. Add layer after layer and you will definitely get the results.
So ultimately I am aiming for a medium wash. So I'm about done with my marker. Now it's time to add the twill texture with colored pencil. So I have a navy blue colored pencil and I'm just gently going left and right motions. Eventually I'll go diagonal as well because I wanna make sure that I'm able to capture that thickness. So just gently go on ahead and apply your colored pencil. Your thumb is back, your index finger is forward and this will allow you to create a nice thick twill on top of that marker which is fairly smooth. All right, now we're gonna repeat this same process with white colored pencil. So the white on top of your navy blue colored pencil is going to actually let that texture pop out. Notice again, it's diagonal and it's also horizontal and vertical. This will help you to have a very realistic looking finished result. Now I'm just going to use the point to just define a little bit of these cuff edges. So I'm doing small circles just to pull out that cuff edge. And I'm keeping the cuff fairly light because the wrong side of the denim is always lighter. So I am not having the denim be too dark at this cuff. I just want to define these edges a little bit. Let's also define some of the edges at our waist for our belt loops and our seam at the waist.
so now that we're just about done you can go on ahead and clean out your marker you don't want to wait because that will dry and it'll be darker forever so I'm just gonna grab some scratch paper here and you just scribble and you'll notice the more you scribble on it your marker just becomes lighter and lighter Wow, you did a great job. That's it for this tutorial, and I definitely look forward to seeing you on our next video. I'm Miss Osuna, and until we meet again, happy sketching.